Go to these last two problems. Is everybody here? Page 96. This is a, um, it's a little bit of a derivation on what we did yesterday. It's a little bit trickier. This is easily the most missed question on the test. It's not hard. It's just remembering one small little detail that tends to throw people. And that detail is what I'm checking you on. Okay, will you notice this detail? So let's just say you were given this inequality and you can see that it's a little different than a polynomial inequality and that it is not a polynomial, it is what we call a rational function. And technically, rational functions are chapter five, it's the next chapter. But I wanted to sneak this in here, this chapter as well, just to give you more time to let it marinate. So you tell me, if this had been an equation, what would you have done to begin solving it? Multiply by x plus two. Sounds great. Only one small problem. If I multiply by an x plus two on both sides, I'm guessing you would cancel that, right? And you would get x times this, and then you would bring down the three, and then here's our moment of truth. What are you gonna write right here? Because what we've learned about inequalities is if I well, we multiply don't know if it's both negative or not. That's right. If I multiply both sides by a positive number, then I would leave that alone. If I multiply both sides by a negative number, a negative number, I would change the direction of inequality. Well, what's x plus two? You don't, you don't know. You don't know. So do I change it or not? You, you do one with the two. You chance. technically could do both. But let me ask you a question. What did we do before when we were solving? polynomials. Did we worry about the inequality at all? Or did we find out where it was equal or not equal and mark those points and just check? Mark. That's what we did, right? So why don't we just say, I don't know whether it's greater than or less than. And the, I, there's actually going to be situations where it might be both. So I'm just going to take the equal part and bring that down. Now, if there wasn't an equal part, what are you going to bring down? Not even. A not equal part, and what you would be finding are places where it's not true. You would just put open circles there. Now I can solve this, right? Now we're not going to factor that. What are we going to do? No. We're going to set it equal to zero, right? Factor and solve. So I get x equals a negative 3, x equals 1. And I come down here and I put a closed circle at negative three and a closed at positive one. Now I have a question. If I were to start shading right now, you with me? Is there a chance that this part in the middle gets shaded? Yes. And if it was, you would be saying that every value in between negative three and one would be true, right? But I can look up here right now and see that in this original problem, there's no way that negative two can work. Are you with me? Now it's possible I wouldn't have shaded that, but the problem is I have got to account for that undefined spot. If I'm over here, it can't be one. And I've got to mark those values regardless of what happens here as open circles. Well, now that I have my critical numbers, and my undefined spots, now I'm gonna start checking. And there are no patterns here, like before. Where, remember before, they would always alternate with there were odd powers, right? Well, in this case, you've got all kinds of weird stuff. First of all, these are odd powers. So you'd say, oh, it alternates here and here, it alternates here and here. But this, this undefined thing throws it off. I've looked, a lot of times it does alternate. But I've looked at a lot of these that don't, and it's just kinda, I don't know, I don't trust anything about rational functions as far as patterns go. And these are rational functions because of the denominator. So let's just start checking. All right, so if I check something like negative four, what happens? Now the problem here is I have to check this back in the original problem. So it's not a matter of being positive or negative in the original problem. Don't check it here. You gotta check it here. So if I'm checking this all in the, negative, in the original problem, it's a matter of it being true or false. Are you with me? Whereas before it was a matter of it being true, but it was all about being negative or positive. So I'm gonna have to plug a negative four in there. So if I'm checking 
the negative 4, I'm going to get negative 4 on the left. And here I'm going to get 3 over a negative, negative 2, so a negative 3 halves. So is negative 4 a bigger number than negative 3 halves? No, it's much further to the left. So that's not true. I am not going to shave this. And then I can check. This is a little annoying. Sorry. I try to keep these separated enough that give you a whole number, but it's not always the case. So let me check negative 2 and a half or negative 5 halves. Again, negative 5 halves. When I check that, it give me negative 5 halves greater than or equal to 3 over. What's negative 5 halves plus 2? Negative 1 half. Negative 1 half. And what's 3 divided by a negative 1 half? Negative 6. Is negative 5 halves bigger than or equal to negative 6? Yes. Yes, so shade. And then checking a 0 will be easy for me, right? I plug a 0 in there, I get 0 bigger than or equal to 3 halves. Is that true? No. Don't shade. And then checking something like 2 is 2 bigger than or equal to 3 fourths. Yes. Yes. Guess what the biggest mistake I see on this is? You don't check and you just shade something. Yes, and the open circle. Those two things. They forget the open circle. And then right here, they just bring this down. They just bring that down, bring that down, bring that down. And then they get to here and they think, oh. And they forget about the open circle and they try to shade based on this. It's just not the way it works. Or even worse, they bring the inequality here. And that certainly is not going to work. Don't do that at all. Are you all with me? So anyway, we had it right before, before the video. Let's keep it right. You with me? And again, if it's not an equal sign, then you would say, oh, not equal, not equal, not equal, not equal, not equal. And these also would be open circles. Mm -hmm. All right? But that's not the case here. And wait, do we remember that? Don't think you're with me? Yes. All right, let's try it one more time. And then you'll be finished with these, I guess, on your homework. Um, but these are, that's always a test question. Do what? This is homework. Yep. So right here, same thing. You see an inequality, it's a rational function. What would you do? So multiply by an x minus one. Of course, it cancels there. Here, I'm gonna have to foil it out. And all said and done, you get that. X minus 11 on the other side, what's the inequality? I just don't know. Because I don't know whether I multiply both sides by positive or negative. So if I don't know the inequality, at least I know the equal part, right? So I'm going to bring that down. I'm gonna get it all over here so I can factor it. Add an 11. And if it doesn't factor, by the way, on your test, then you probably made an error because I've made all these problems work so that they factor nicely. So at this point, sure enough, it does factor nicely, x plus 4, x plus 1, and I get negative 4 and negative 1. So negative 4 is a root, negative 1 is a root, or is a critical number. But what else do I know? X cannot equal positive 1, open circle there, and this is more like what I'd probably give you on a test where you, you can try, I try to, where you get nice neat whole numbers that you can check. So the check's going to be a little worse, well, maybe a tiny bit worse than before. If I check something like negative 5, I get negative 5 plus 7 is 2, negative 5 minus 11 is negative 16 over a Negative six. six, which is 16 over six, which is eight over, eight over three, and that is a little bit bigger than two. All right, and then check something like negative two, and I get positive five on the left, and negative 13 over four. Three. Checking negative two, right? So negative 13 over negative three, which is 13 thirds, which is about four ish. Is four is bigger than five ish? So don't shade. Checking zero. Super easy. Seven less than or equal to negative 11 over negative one, which is 11. That's true. And then finally, checking something like two would be nine. 
over a negative 9 over 1. Right? Mm -hmm. That is not true. That is not true. And then we haven't even written the answers down. If I was writing the solution to this, because the graph just helped me find the solution, or the graph of it, the solution would be negative 3 to 2, negative 2 open, and then, sorry, and then bracket 1 to infinity over here on the left, and over here it would be negative infinity to negative 4 bracket, negative 1 to 1 parentheses. Right? Is there like a certain person that came up with this or was it like multiple people? You talking about interval notation? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Sure. We didn't do that. Did we? Yeah, brackets make it closed. Yeah, brackets means it's colored in or closed. Oh. And then parentheses open. What does it mean? U means union. It means or. Oh. Um, but um, AP Cal normally puts commas. But union notation is more formal. I don't care. You can put commas if you want. It's like listing your answers. Your answers could be like two or four or five or seven or whatever. But or. Y'all with me? Okay. Sign off. That's the.